Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is part 10 of the CCNA exam practice question series. In this video, I will be covering the topics and questions that will help you pass the CCNA certification exam. I have compiled a 30 practice questions to get you prepped and primed for the success on the CCNA exam. But hold on tight because it's not just about answering questions. We will also be explaining the concepts that will make you feel like Cisco networking superhero. So if you are ready to ace the CCNA exam and elevate your career to new heights, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss any future content. So let's gear up and dive into the success. Question number one, refer to exhibit. Load balance traffic is coming in from the van destined to a host at 172.16.1.190, which next hop is used by the router to forward the request. So we have this exhibit and inside this exhibit basically we have a routing table of R1 and we are interested in these routes and we have to determine that which route will be basically used to reach this destination host or this destination IP address and they are uh, we are being asked about the next hop these are the next hops that will be used by the router so in effect we are uh, being asked about the route and the next hop so the options are Option A 192.168.7.4, option B 192.168.7.7, option C 192.168.7.35 and option D 192.168.7.40. So let me first highlight the uh, correct option and then I will explain it. So the correct next hub to reach this destination is 192.168.7.35. And it is basically this one. And this is because if we look at our destination, it is 1.190. And this particular route has uh, the range that contains this IP address, as well as this is also the route having the longest prefix. So we, uh, we do not need to look further. And the correct answer is this one so if we analyze the route we can see that this is basically the route this is the subnet mask the 184 is the first uh, ip address of this particular route which is the network address and then the usable ip range is from 185 up to 190 which is our desired destination which is also the last usable ip and the broadcast IP address is the last one, 191. I hope this is clear. Let's move forward to the next question. Question number two, what is the function of off-the-shelf switches in a controller-based network? So we are asked about off-the-shelf switches in a controller-based network. The controller-based network is basically the software defined network or SD. And so what do we mean when we say the of the shelf switches and the options are option A providing a central view of the deployed network, option B forwarding packets, option C making routing decisions and option D setting packet handling policies. And the correct option is that the of the shelf switches in a controller based network have the function of setting packet handling policies and this is the uh, definition so i think this answer is wrong basically the off the shelf switches are used to forward the packets if we uh, analyze the sdn network in sdn we have a controller Let me draw it. And then we have in the data plane, this is basically the control plane.
in the data plane we have the so called off the shelf switches so the routing decision or policies are taken over here in the control plane by the controller and then these are pushed to the data plane where we have these switches and the function of these switches is to forward the packets from the source to the destination so the correct answer here would be forwarding the packets and the explanation is that the off the shelf switches are a type of network device that is designed to forward packets between different nodes in a network they are typically used in controller based network where a central controller is responsible for making routing decisions and setting packet handling policies so the routing decisions as well as the packet handling uh, pack, uh, setting packet handling policies they are decided at the control plane by the controller the off the shelf switches simply follow the instructions provided by the controller and forward the packets accordingly i hope this is clear let's move forward to the next question question number 3 which command entered on a switch configured with rapid pvst plus listens and learns for a specific time period and the options are option a spanning tree vlan 1 priority 4096 option b spanning tree vlan 1 hello time 10 option c spanning tree vlan 1 maximum age 6 and option d spanning tree vlan 1 forward time 20 and the correct option is option d spanning tree vlan 1 forward time 20 so this is the explanation of this command so the forward time parameter specified the time that a switch will spend in the listening and learning states before transitioning to the forwarding state in the spanning tree protocol in rapid pvst plus adjusting the forward time controls how long the switch listens and learns before forwarding traffic for vlan 1 the default value is 15 seconds but you can modify it using this forward time command question number 4 which van topology has the highest degree of reliability we are talking about van topologies these are also the lan topology but here we are talking about the van topology and the options are option a full mesh option b point to point option c hub and spoke and option d router on a stick and the correct option is at the full mesh topology has the highest degree of reliability and availability and this is the explanation a full mesh topology is where every network node is connected directly to every other node this provides the highest degree of redundancy and reliability because if any single link or node fails there are always multiple alternative paths for data to reach its destination and this is uh, a typical diagram of a full mesh topology so we can see that every node is connected to every other node and there are multiple links between let's suppose node a and node b if this this node a can reach node b through this link so if this link fails node a can still reach through this one and this one if this one fails it can still reach through this one this one this one i hope you got the point so there are multiple redundant link between nodes and so this topology has the highest level of redundancy but it is also again uh, difficult and costly to maintain when the network grows so this is uh not very practical and practically this topology is not used when the network grows question number 5 what is a function performed by a web server this is a straightforward and simple question so the options are provide an application that is transmitted over http option b send and retrieve email from client devices option c authenticate and authorize a user's identity and option d securely store files for ftp access 
so the correct option is that web server provide an application that is transmitted over http hypertext transfer protocol a web server's primary function is to deliver content such as web pages applications or data to client over the http or https protocol so the secure version of http is https this allows users to access websites and web-based applications through their browsers. Other options like sending and retrieving email, that is option B, authentication, and FTP storage are handled by other type of servers or specific services. Question number six, what is the collapsed layer in collapsed core architecture? So what does collapse layer consist of in collapsed core architecture? And the options are option A, core and WAN. Option B, access and WAN. Option C, distribution and access. And option D, core and distribution. And the correct option is option D. So the collapsed layer consists of core and the distribution layer. So in a collapsed core architecture, the core and distribution layer are combined into a single layer known as the collapsed layer, collapsed core layer. This simplifies the network design, reduce, reduces costs and is often used in smaller network where separation of core and distribution is unnecessary. The access layer remains separate and connects directly to the collapsed core. And this is uh, what we are talking about. So this is the three-tier architecture that consists of access, distribution, and core. And when these two layers, the core and distribution are combined into a single layer that is known as collapsed core, then we get this architecture that is known as collapsed core architecture. Question number seven, an engineer is installing a new wireless printer with a static IP address on the Wi-Fi network. Which feature must be enabled and configured to prevent connection issues with the printer? And the options are option A, client exclusion. Option B, DHCP address assignment. Option C, passive client. And option D, static IP tunneling. And the correct option is option C, passive client so what is passive client so in a wireless network a passive client is a device that does not actively participate in the dynamic ip assignment process through dhcp but instead uses a static ip enabling and config configuring the passive client feature ensures that the wireless infrastructure can handle devices like printers with static ip addresses properly avoiding potential connection issues the other options, including the client exclusion, DHCP, and static IP tunneling, do not directly address this scenario. Question number eight, which MAC address is recognized as a VRRP virtual address? And the options are option A, 000.5 echo 00.010A, option B, 0005-3709.8968, option C, again tetra 0 7 ac 99 option D, triple zero seven dot c 70ab one And the correct option is, option A, tetra 0 5 echo 0 a and the explanation is that VRRP basically uses MAC addresses in the format tetra 0.5-00.01xx and where the xx represents the VRRP group number. The address shown here .010a follows this format and indicates a VRRP group number of 10. So 0a in hexadecimal stands for 10 in decimal. The other options represent MAC addresses used by different protocols such as HSRP, that is hot standby router protocol.
Question number nine, refer to the exhibit. When router R1 is sending traffic to IP address 10.56.192.1, which interface or next hub address does it use to route the packet? So again, we are talking about reaching a destination of this 10.56.192.1. And we have a routing table of R1. So, which route and which next hop will be used? And the options are option A 10.56.0.1, option B 000 /0, option C VLAN 57, and option D 10.56.128.19. And the correct, let me first bring the correct option and then we will explain the answer. So the correct option is 10.56.0.1, this one, this next hub which corresponds to this default static route. So why is that? It is because the 10.56.192.1 is not available in all these routes these routes does not contain this destination address there therefore the router will resort to the default route as you can see i have uh, analyzed the routes so this is this one this route if you analyze this route we have the range of 10.56.0.1 up to 127.254 so this does not contain the 192.1. Another route is this one. Let analyze this one as well. So again, this route range is 1056.128.1 up to 1056.191.254. So this route also does not contain our desired destination of 1056.192.1. And uh, these, this is also uh, uh, slash 32. This one is also slash 32. So this one is also, it is uh, so this is not uh, a route basically. So our desired uh, and our correct option is this default route because uh, default route because other routes does not contain the specified destination address i hope this is clear let's move to the next question question number 10 what is a benefit for external users who consume public cloud resources and the options are option a implemented over a dedicated van Option B, located in the same data center as the users. Option C, all hosted on physical servers. And option D, accessed over the internet. So the benefit of public cloud for external user is that it can be accessed by all the external user over the internet regardless of their location and their geographical uh, location or they may be anywhere inside their homes or inside the office and they can consume the public cloud. So this option highlights that external users can easily access public cloud resources via the internet allowing for, for flexibility and convenience in utilizing cloud resources from anywhere. Question number 11, when should an engineer implement a collapsed core architecture? And the options are option A for small network with minimal need for growth. Option B, the access and distribution layers must be on the same device. Option C, for large network that are connected to multiple remote sites. And option D, only when using VSS technology. And the correct option is that the collapsed core architecture should be used for small network with minimal need for growth. So a collapsed core architecture is typically implemented in smaller networks where the access and distribution layers are combined into a single layer 
making it simpler and more cost effective for environments that do not require extensive scalability. Question number 12, what is the purpose of the Cisco DNA center controller? And the options are option A, to secure physical access to a data center. Option B, to scan a network and generate a layer 2 network diagram. Option C, to securely manage and deploy network devices. And option D, to provide layer 3 services to autonomous access points. And the correct option is that the Cisco DNA center controller is basically used to securely manage and deploy network devices. The Cisco DNA center serves as a centralized network management platform that enables secure management, automation and deployment of network devices across an organization's infrastructure. Question number 13, which encryption method is used by WPA3? And the options are option A, PSK, option B, TKIP, option C, SAE, and option D, AES. And the correct option is AES, that is an advanced encryption standard. So that is the encryption algorithm or encryption method used in WPA3. Question number 14, what differentiates device management enabled by a Cisco DNA center from traditional campus device management? And the options are option A per device, option B centralized, option C device by device hands on and option D CLI or oriented device. And the correct option is that the Cisco DNA center management is basically centralized. So Cisco DNA center enables centralized device management, allowing for more efficient and streamlined management of multiple network devices from a single platform, as opposed to the traditional campus device management, which is often more decentralized and manual. Question number 15. Which command implies the use of SNMP version 3? And the options are option A, SNMP server host. Option B, SNMP server community. Option C, SNMP server enabled traps. And option D, SNMP server user. And the correct option is option D, SNMP server user. So the command SNMP server user is associated with SNMP version 3 as it is used to configure users with specific security parameters, which is a key feature of SNMP version 3's enhanced security model. Question number 16, refer to the exhibit. This is the exhibit. What is represented by R1 and SW1 or router 1 and switch 1 within the JSON output. So we are talking about these. So what are represented by these? And the options are option A object, option B value, option C key and option D array. And the correct option is that the R1 and SW1 are basically the values. And this is the explanation in the given JSON output, the routers and the switches are keys and the values associated with them are arrays. Within these arrays are 1, are 2, are 3 and switch 1, switch 2, switch 3 are values. Here is the breakdown of all the uh, terminologies. So the key, a key is a name that identifies a value within a JSON object value. A value is the data associated with a key. It can be of various types including strings, numbers, arrays or objects. And array, an array is an ordered collection of values. Therefore, R1 and SW1 are values within the arrays associated with the keys, routers and switches respectively. Question number 17. What are two examples of multi-factor authentication? Choose two options. And the options are option A, single sign-on, 
ऑप्शन बी यूनिक यूजर नॉलेज ऑप्शन सी पासवर्ड दैट एक्सपायर ऑप्शन डी सॉफ्ट टोकन एंड ऑप्शन ई शेयर पासवर्ड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एंड द करेक्ट ऑप्शन आर दैट द मल्टी फैक्टर ऑथेंटिकेशन एग्जाम्पल फर्स्ट एग्जाम्पल इज द यूनिक यूजर नॉलेज एंड द सेकेंड इज सॉफ्ट टोकन मल्टी फैक्टर ऑथेंटिकेशन दैट इज एम एफ ए रिक्वायर्स टू आर मोर डिफरेंट फैक्टर्स टू वेरीफाई ए यूजर आइडेंटिटी टिपिकली कम्बाइनिंग समथिंग द यूजर नोज लाइक ए पासवर्ड और पेन विद समथिंग द यूजर हैज लाइक ए सॉफ्ट टोकन और हार्ड टोकन क्वेश्चन नंबर एटीन हाउ डज इनक्रिप्शन प्रोटेक्ट द वायरलेस नेटवर्क In the option or option A, via the integrity checks to identify wireless forgery attacks in the frame. Option B, via an algorithm to change wireless data so that only access point and client understand it. Option C, via specific ciphers to detect and prevent zero-day network attacks. And option D, via a policy to prevent unauthorized users from communicating on the wireless network. and the correct option is option b that is via an algorithm to change wireless data so that only the access point and client understand it so encryption protects a wireless network by transforming the data being transmitted into a format that can only be understood by the authorized party which are the access point and the client This ensures that even if the data is intercepted, it cannot be read without the appropriate decryption key. Question number nineteen: Why implement VRRP? What is the purpose of implementing VRRP? And the option or option A to hand over to end users the auto discovery of virtual gateways. Option B to provide end users with a virtual gateway in a multi-vendor network. option c to leverage a weighing scheme to provide uninterrupted service and option d to detect link failures without the overhead of bidirectional forwarding detection and the correct option is that vrrp is basically used to provide end users with a virtual gateway in a multi vendor network so vrrp that is virtual router redundancy protocol is implemented to create a virtual router or gateway that allows end user to access a single ip address regardless of the underlying physical routers this provides redundancy and failovers capabilities enabling seamless network connectivity in a multi vendor environment so this is how the uh, vrrp looks like so this is the virtual gateway we are talking about so the vrrp is formed between two routers these router have their physical ips as well but to the clients the virtual ip is used by the client so at a time one router is active and the other is standby so the active router actively processes the traffic and if the link fails or the router fails then the traffic is diverted to the second router which then becomes active so that's the purpose of virtual gateway and vrrp it provides uh, redundancy and high availability question number 20 in a cloud computing environment what is the rapid elasticity and the option or option a control and monitoring of resource consumption by the tenant option b automatic adjustment of capacity based on need option c pooling resources in a multi tenant model based on need and option d self service of computing resources by the tenant and the correct option is that the rapid elasticity in cloud means automatic adjustment of capacity based on the user need So rapid elasticity in cloud computing refers to the ability to automatically scale resources up or down as required by the demand this allows for flexible resource allocation and ensures that users have the capacity they need without over provisioning or under utilizing resources 
let's move forward to question number 21 what is the reason to implement ip version 4 private ip addressing we are talking about uh, rfc 1918 address scheme that contains n slash 8 slash 16 and 172.16 slash well so why are these used there are multiple reason one reason is given here appropriate reason so we have to select that one and the options are to reduce the risk of a network security breach option b so the uh, correct answer already highlighted accidentally so one uh, benefit of private ip addresses is that it reduces the risk of network security breach how this is the explanation implementing the ip version 4 private addressing helps reduce the risk of a network security breach by isolating internal network traffic from the public internet private ip addresses are not routable on the internet making it more difficult for external attacker to directly access devices within the private network question number 22 what is the purpose of configuring different level of syslog for different devices on the network in the option are option a to rate limit messages for different severity this is severity severity levels from each device Option B, to set the severity of syslog messages from each device. Option C, to identify the source from which each syslog message originated. And option D, to control the number of syslog messages from different devices that are stored locally. And the correct option is, option B, to set the severity of syslog messages from each device. So, configuring different level of syslog for various devices allows network administrators to categorize and prioritize syslog messages based on severity. This helps in managing the volume of logs generated and ensures that critical messages receive appropriate attention, while less critical messages can be logged at lower levels. Question number 23. What is a function of MAC address learning? Options are option A, it is enabled by default on all VLANs and interfaces. Option B, it increases the potential for MAC address flooding. Option C, it is disabled by default on all interfaces connected to trunks. And option D, it increases security on the management VLAN. So the correct option is option A. The MAC address is learned because it is enabled by default on all VLANs and interfaces. And the explanation is that MAC address learning is a function performed by network switches to dynamically learn and store the MAC addresses of devices connected to their ports. This feature is typically enabled by default on all VLANs and interfaces to facilitate official frame forwarding on the MAC address table, improving network performance. Question number 24. What is effect related to FTP, that is file transfer protocol? And the options are option A, it uses block numbers to identify and mitigate data transfer errors. Option B, it always operates without user authentication. Option C, it relies on the well-known UDP port 69. And option D, it uses two separate connections for control and data traffic. And the correct fact about the FTP is option D, that it uses two separate connections for control and data traffic. And the explanation is that in control based networking, sorry, this is not the correct uh, explanation of this particular question. But let me show this diagram. So, this is what we are talking about the uh, connections between FTP client and FTP server uh, ba is basically based on two parts. One is data connection, this one is the data connection 
that uses port 20 on the server and the second one is the control connection that uses port 21 on the server so this is the fact about uh, ftp that two separate connections for control and data traffic is used so the control means that control commands are sent between server and the clients while the data connection means that when a client download data the actual data is downloaded from the server to the client question number 25 refer to the exhibit so this is the exhibit we have a router and uh, its ip its routing table is shown and the question is that a packet sourced from the ip address 172.18.33.2 is destined for the destination 172.18.32.38 where does the router forward the packet and we have this next hop addresses so we have a destination this 32.38 so how will this destination be reached using this routing table which specific route and its uh, concerned next hop will be used so the next hop options are option a 10.1.1.1 option b 10.1.1.3 option c loopback 0 and option d gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 so let me first underline the correct option and then i will explain the uh, answer so the correct option is gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 so this is the gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 so the our uh, destination uh, ip address is 172.18.32.38 this is 37.32 so obviously this is not the this one is the correct answer and it is because if you look at the other option this one is also not because it's 32 slash 32 these routes also uh, contain the required ip address but always remember that we have to choose the longest prefix first so this is slash 30 is the longest prefix that why this is the correct answer and the correct option is that the destination will be reached through this uh, route whose uh, allied interface is gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 and this is the uh, analysis and breakdown of this uh, route so this is the network ip address the first 36 and the usable two ip addresses is, is are 37 and 38 so our destination is basically 38 and 39 is the broadcast address 252 is basically the subnet mask for slash 29 for slash 30 sorry i hope this is clear let's move to the next question Question number 26, which command configures the Cisco wireless lane controller to prevent a serial session with the WLC or wireless lane controller CLI from being automatically logged out? We are talking about serial session, remember? And the options are option A, config session max session 0. Option B, config serial timeout 9600. Option C config serial timeout 0 and option D config session timeout 0. And the correct option is option C config serial timeout 0. So this command will make sure that the session is not uh, automatically logged out. So the serial word is used for serial connection while the sessions is used for other type of connection such as let's suppose telnet here we are talking about serial so this option c is the correct option question number 27 refer to the exhibit this is the exhibit how many json objects are represented and the options are option a1 option b2 option c3 and option d4 and the correct option is option a so this all 
thing is a one sim single object the whole objects or the whole uh, uh, values between these curly brackets is a single object and this is the explanation in the given json output there is only one json object the entire structure within the curly braces represent a single object this object contains multiple key value pairs where the keys are switch 1 switch 2 switch 3 and switch 4 and the values are arrays of strings representing interface names so these are values and these are basically keys and this whole thing is one object Question number 28, what, which enhancement is implemented in WPA3? This is the last test Wi-Fi security standard. In the options are option A, applies A to 2.1x authentication. Option B, uses TKIP. Option C, employs PKI to identify access points. And option D, protects against brute force attacks. And the correct option is, option D, that it protects against brute force attacks so wpa3 enhances security by implementing stronger encryption methods and protection against brute force attacks including a feature called simultaneous authentication of equals sae which provides a more secure key exchange process this makes it much more difficult for attackers to guess passwords even if they have access to the encrypted traffic Question number 29, which type of port is used to connect the wired network when an autonomous access point maps two VLANs to its wireless LANs? The options are option A, access, option B, lag, link aggregation group, option C, trunk, and option D, ether channel. And the correct option is option C, trunk. So, when an auto autonomous access point maps two or more VLANs to its wireless LANs, it uses a trunk port to connect to the wired network. A trunk port allows multiple VLANs to pass through a single physical link, enabling the AP to communicate with devices on different VLANs. Question number 30. Refer to the exhibit. A network engineer must configure router R1 with a host route to the server. Which command must the engineer configure? <clears throat> so the question is, we have this router R1 and we have this host or server having this IP 10, 10, 10, 10. So a route must be configured at this router R1 so that we can reach to this desired host or server. So, what will be the route? And the options are option A, IP route 10, 10, 10, 10, and 255.255.255.255, and next hop is 192.168.0.2. Option B, IP route 10, 10, 10.0, and subnet pass 255.255.255.0. And next IP 192.168.0.2. Option C, IP route 0000 and subnet pass 0000 and next IP 192.168.0.2. And the last option is that IP route 192.168.0.2, 255.255.255 and next IP is 10.10.10.10. 10, 10, 10. So this is obviously wrong because we have this is the destination it should be here and this is the next stop it should be here this was uh, we can configure this route and uh, the host will be accessible using this route but this is default route we need to configure the host route only and this this route basically configures a whole slash 24 network again it is uh, this route will include all the host in this 10.0 network ranges from 1 to up to 254 so again this is also not desirable this one is the correct option because it configures the route for the 
this dot 10 host only with a subnet mask of slash 32 and the next hop is here this is the next hop the next router interface ip address to which it is connected so the option a is the correct option so that's all for this video i hope uh, this video has been informative and please subscribe and stay tuned for the upcoming video and you, if you have any question please comment i will apply to each and every comment thank you and see you soon